For most people, TV and movies, and art in general, are an escape from the ugly realities of the real world. But it seems like every day now we're learning of a new ugly reality about the people who make those fictional worlds possible. Some have taken to calling it the Weinstein effect after the Hollywood producer was accused by multiple women of sexual harassment, assault, and rape and was fired from his production company. Then, of course, there's Kevin Spacey accused of sexually assaulting multiple men, including at least one minor, leading to Netflix firing him from the hit House of Cards and Sony Pictures removing him from another movie due out next month. When Newton Ray's comic Louis C.K. was accused of multiple cases of sexual misconduct, FX and other cut ties with him, and his movie release and comedy special were both canceled. Many others have been accused, as you know, in recent days, but with these guys alone, if you were to boycott them all, you'd be doing a lot of bars and tone watching on your TV. So how do we come to terms with this post-Harvey Hollywood? Can we and should we separate the art from the artist? Joining me, R. W. G. B. H. is arts editor. That's Jared Bone, your senior arts editor. Is that correct? Executive arts. Editor. Executive <laughs> arts. Let me get it right. Nice to see you, Jared. A UMass professor of American studies, Rachel Rubin. Rachel, thanks for being here. And Matt Gilbert, TV critic for the Boston Globe. Good to see you all. Let's start with what your guiding principle is here. I know what yours is. You're on one end of the spectrum, which is I'm going to boycott a lot of these things. I can't watch them anymore. On the other end of the spectrum is a guy like Mark Anthony Neal, uh, quoted in the New York Times, at African American studies at Duke. Let the arts stand for itself and these men stand in judgment and never the twain shall meet. Defend your position. What is your position? Well, you know, my position is uh, that I'm a hypocrite, basically, <laughs> you know. Um, I feel strongly that I don't want to support some of the artists who are doing bad things. At the same time, I cut slack for certain people, and you know, there's historical context to take. So it's a case by case deal for you. It's a case by case deal. Is it a case by case deal for you or no? Well, I mean, you could call it a case by case deal for me. One of the important things for me is how um, is the cultural conversation. This is hosting, and we'll talk about that more. But you know, a boycott implies a certain organization. Right. So, you know, an individual's boycott, like that depends on how you feel watching those people, because it isn't going to change anything about the profits they make. Um, so there are certain people I can't stomach. Uh -huh. And, you know, obviously, you know, Give me um, one at the top of your list. Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Right. Okay. Because like the stuff he's done is in his movies, okay. which you could say the same thing about Woody Allen. We'll get back to that in a second. What's your guiding principle, Jared Bowen? It's the same. Executive arts editor, <laughs> by the way. And because I am the executive arts editor, <laughs> I do have to see a lot of these individuals, but one individual, Woody Allen, I have, ever since his scandal broke more than a decade ago, I've never paid anything to see one of his films. But do you it's do it for your work? Well, I have to do it for Why? my work. And I think Why? it's fair to do it for my work because I think you do have to look at the basis of art versus the individual. And you can, by the way, trace this all the way back to Caravaggio, who was committed a, who committed murder. So should we, his paintings be taken down off of museum walls? I mean, th this is a very, very gray area. We'll get to another painting in a second. Can we start with a guy who you said you don't even want to see his face anymore? I'm totally with you. Kevin Spacey. Spacey yeah. So does that mean nothing old, nothing, well, there may never be not anything new, nothing ever? I won't watch the old just because I can't even look at him right now. You know, maybe in five years I'll be able to stomach his face. I don't know. Does anybody um, feel any differently about him or no? Or is that, are you in the same boat as Matthew is here? No, but I will tell you, that this has huge repercussions just beyond what he is alleged to have done. I happened to be in Baltimore, your hometown, over the weekend, and they were talking to me about what that means, the fact that that show is shutting down, that's where it's been shot. For hundreds of workers. For hundreds mean. of workers, for the local historical society, which was receiving thousands of dollars each month just to film there. I mean, this is widespread devastation for this community which really needed it all because of his actions. So do you end up in a different place than he does because of that? Or do you? What do you think about that? I don't, you know. I, You're a hypocrite. I, I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> I mean, but you know, should Kate Blanchett have agreed to work with Woody Allen? Or should she, like Gal Gadot, who now is saying that she won't work with Brett Ratner if he's involved in the new Wonder Woman movie, um, you know, should should they all be doing that? Well, you know, I talk mean, about Kate, just... you know, speaking of, let's do Woody Allen just for a second here. We discussed this in the radio show, Marjorie Egan and I, the other day, and I think it was either Marjorie or Cole, or maybe even me, speaking of hypocrites, who <laughs> said, I, I can deal with him when he's off camera, like in, in the Cape Blanchett, Blue Jasmine, but I can't watch him anymore on camera, which is sort of an act of self-delusion. He's still intimately involved in the production, so what's the difference? 
Is there a difference? There is a difference because, again, we're, we're, we're sort of differentiating between, like, the ramifications of an actual boycott and, you know, and what it means for individual viewers who see something. And, by the way, it's important to note that what this means is, you know, viewers shape the meaning of something. So you see something, you feel a punch in the gut. You can't watch it. A lot because of there's a physical presence as opposed to just in the credits, you see. But you know that Woody Allen, you know that you can never watch Shakespeare in love again because Harvey Wine, he doesn't appear. He doesn't play Shakespeare. He doesn't appear in the movie. So isn't it totally arbitrary and sort of... You, yes. It's ridiculous, right? <laughs> I mean, Woody Allen, by the way, beyond sort of marrying his daughter, for those who don't know, allegedly assaulted his uh, his and other daughters. <laughs> I mean, just so that people know right. if they're of a certain age and yeah. miss that. You're shaking your head. Uh, no, I just, you know, it, it seems like it, we've known for a long time that art, not all artists are nice people. And some of them do some very bad things, you know. Some um, do some Charles really Dickens evil was stuff. an anti-Semite. And I will never stop reading yeah, but, Charles. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I'm going to jump around here because since you've both mentioned dead people, uh, Picasso wasn't terrific to women either. What's the was the line? He, the line was he was either treated them as goddesses or doormats was the line that some people said pretty horrible to a lot of women. The reality is, and this gets back to the hypocrisy thing, if Picasso was alive today, I assume a lot of people would say, if they knew this, I'm not going to go see his work. But he's dead, and so I don't know almost anybody who's not going to see his work. Is, is that ridiculous? That, that people, that, that, that because he's dead, because I can justify dead. going and seeing him <laughs> and separating his art from his behavior towards women? Yeah. Well, I, yes. It I is think, ridiculous. No, I don't think it's necessarily, again, I don't think it's necessarily ridiculous because it has to do with the associations you bring with you. So you're going to watch Louis C.K. when, he's di when he nope. dies? 50 years. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm serious. Never. Okay. I will never. But again, his work also has that stuff in it. You know, see, the Louis C.K. thing, what I find interesting, uh, uh, you may not like this. I'm, I have no intention of ever seeing him again. He didn't touch anybody, and he sort of apologized, unlike these other assaulters, perpetrators, right. whatever you want, which leads me to believe that he may have a, a five-year sentence or a ten-year sentence right. before maybe even you uh, uh, acquit him or at least put him on parole. Like Mel Gibson. Think? Like Mel Gibson, yeah. Right. Like Woody right. Allen. I mean, people stroll, are, I was really astounded, actually, when I opened up the Globe to realize that there was a letter sent to the Coolidge Corner Theater asking if they'll show Woody Allen movies. Just today. I, just, and I thought, why is this letter coming now? We have known this about him, but but why why did he get this pass for all this time? Well, the answer this... is obvious, because we're luckily in an environment, I mean, luckily, every day there's a new story, so we're more focused than we ever we're were before. We're focused on right? this right now in a really useful way, right? The Brattles said they're never going to do another Roman Polanski series again, mm -hmm. right? They did it for many, many years, obviously, like his scandal was, you know, so long ago. So that's what I'm saying. That's what's so important about having these famous people be called up, you know, because it happens all over the place. And I really think that we need to, you know, it's really, I think, important to raise right now that thousands and thousands and thousands of female farm workers signed a letter in support of these women. And they said, this happens to us on the fields all the time. Are we going to start boycotting all the fruit now? I mean, so, you know, we're taking this moment as a converse, as, a, as an opportunity. We only have 30 seconds left. Why, if it turns out we all care as much about what was done to these women as I think all four of us do, why can't we just say no? Yeah. I mean, why can't we just say... Uh, we're just not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to. You wrote, I'm going to go to the premiere because I have to of, uh, before the movie was pulled of Louis C.K. You said I got to go to Woody Allen. Why can't we just say in support of the women who have been harassed, assaulted and raped and will be harassed, assaulted and raped? Never again. Why can't we just do that? <laughs> or should we just, uh, anybody, we only have 30 seconds left. Anybody? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough question. It's, it's I think not so it's, easily answered in 30 seconds yeah. because I think all of these are deeply emotional things. And, and it's also troubling for me the work that is embedded in their life. Like Louis C.K., his latest film, apparently is very close to some of his behavior. Well, Woody Allen, you were showing the, the, the footage of Manhattan very close to oh his behavior. Oh, my God, that. I mean, and, and, that's, and, and there's a difference in watching something as right. a fan and watching something for work. Right? I got right? it. And These guys also, have to, I have to teach about Hitler. Last 10 seconds. You can also do things like go to a Woody Allen movie, but then donate some money to a domestic abuse, you know, 
Oh, on one hand and on the other. A little bit. Well, I'm really glad yeah. we resolved this. Jared, it's good to see you. <laughs> Rachel, thanks so much. Matt, thanks, great to Jim. see you. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.